Is ice slippery? At first, this seems like such a no-brainer question. Ice is slippery because it's ice. <laughs> Duh. However, almost all other solids in our physical universe are not slippery. Take rock, for example. In its solid form, like a granite countertop, it's not very slippery. In fact, you cannot skate across it like you do on an ice rink. So why is ice, or snow for that matter, so slippery? In the science world, there are two common explanations. The first one says that the melting point of ice rises when you apply pressure or squeeze it. This would explain why ice skaters can whiz across the rink and rock triple axles with no problem at all. Well, the triple axle part is all on them, but at least the whizzing part. The pressure of the person's body exerting on the ice below raises the melting point of the ice, creating a thin layer of water that becomes very slippery and can be moved across. So while this pressure explanation makes sense for ice skaters, it doesn't make sense at all for snow sports like snowboarding, skiing, or sledding. Since this type of equipment used for these sports has a much larger flat surface distributing your weight, this actually creates a lower pressure underneath your feet. The pressure wouldn't be enough to melt the snow more than a degree or so, which is clearly not enough to generate slippery water if the outside air were just a few degrees colder than freezing. It has been calculated that going down a mountain at a reasonable 22 miles per hour or 36 kilometers per hour, which is pretty average for snowboarding, with someone who weighs 165 pounds or 75 kilograms would generate about 300 watts of heat power due to friction alone. This is three times the amount of watts needed for a curling iron. However, since it takes energy to melt snow, the bottom of your snowboard or skis would never get quite as hot as a curling iron. So even if you were outside snowboarding when it was, let's say, negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius, the friction from moving relatively slowly on a board is actually enough to melt the snow, providing a thin water layer to glide on. And I can vouch for the friction theory here because when I went sandboarding, the bottom of the board was really hot to touch after I got down at the bottom of the hill. And since our sensory neurons in our hands won't let us hold something over 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 60 degrees Celsius, I'd say that we were in the range of about 130 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit generated from friction alone. Ironically, this friction actually slowed me down over time as the opposite effect happens on sand than on snow. Mostly because I wasn't melting the sand and creating a thin layer of lava to glide over. Oh yeah! However, that'd be really sweet. Thank you so much for watching and to see our sandboarding video in action, click right here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe because we wanna make sure that you never miss a Nickopedia video. We have new videos every week.